Hey guys, so I have tried to do this video. I think this is my sixth try. I recorded a good majority of it while I was getting the dinghy registered, so it's in the truck. Um, bear with it. It's a bit long-winded. I cut a bunch out trying to just stick to the facts and how things happened. It's because it stewed for like three days before I finally decided, you know, I should probably talk about this. Also keep in mind, um, we are talking about getting surveillance set up. And this is another notch in the belt to go, okay, this is another reason to do it. Um, Eric's actually pretty pissed off about it too, because it really does make trying to live comfortably a big challenge around here. Especially when you're doing all of the work on the vessel that you live on. And you're doing it on the water. But it was enough that they called the police and tried to claim that it had been an extremely long, um, over-exaggerated amount of time that she had been left by herself and they were worried she had no food and water. So, um, but you can always skip this video too. I just felt the need because there's a lot of questions that I know that are going to get asked. And there's a lot of these questions that are probably going to come up or have already come up that I've noticed from my experience, you may take something away from. So... It's just not okay to approach a stranger's vessel if you've already been told to leave it alone. Good morning, guys. Uh, so, of course, it's just another gorgeous day here in Florida. Um, there was a couple of things that um, kind of happened a couple days ago, but I still really wanted to talk to you guys about it because <laughs> it was kind of weird. Um, so a couple days ago, um, Eric was running really late getting off of work. So he wasn't back at the normal time. I got off of work and I came into our usual spot, realized he wasn't there, um, that he hadn't been back yet. So I went to loop around the block so that I could peek down the street, check on the dinghy real quick. And as I'm pulling around the corner, I realized Oh, that police officer that I saw coming in is still sitting there. And she's talking to a couple of people standing there with their dog. And so she waves me to a stop and I'm thinking, okay, probably a question about the dinghy or, you know, something. Um, so I stopped, rolled down my window. You know, she came over and, and said, hey, what's up, dude? Um, it was kind of funny. She kept calling me by mail that was fun really because I'm looking at her right in the face and she kept calling me sir I don't look like a guy I'm sorry <laughs> so anyway she tells me that there was a report that um or somebody reported that my dog was sitting there crying she's been howling for a while how long has it been since I've been back to the boat and I said this morning and she says, oh, okay, like confused. And I said, we're there every day. We live there. Oh, um, yeah, because we got a report that said that, that nobody had been back in a really long time. And um, that, you know, the dog had been crying. Typical dog behavior, not a big deal. But apparently these people thought that she was in distress, that they were worried she had no food and water. She'd been out there for a very long time. And I said, no, that's our liverboard. We're there every day. And Kira has full access to that boat because we leave everything open for her to be able to get down below when she needs to. She has total access to food and water at all times. Um, she probably just got set off by the neighbor's dog barking again, which happens from time to time too. And she just kind of chuckled and said, okay, well, yeah, they were kind of making it out to be like, you guys just hadn't been back in a really long time and they were really worried about the dog. And so microchip your pets. That's all I'm saying right now. Cause both of them are microchipped. He passed away. Kira's still microchipped. She's got GPS tracking on her. Good luck. You know, anyway, so what really bothered me about this whole thing, I told the officer, you know, Eric's just running really late. 
it's really unexpected. Normally he's home way earlier than me. We don't have this issue. Um, there's almost always overlapping somebody's home. Uh, that's the way we set it up so that not only the animals are cared for, but the boat could be looked after because you know, the weather changes in Florida in a heartbeat. So, and she says, Oh, okay. Well, as long as, as long as she's fine, she's got everything she needs. And I'll just make sure to let them know that, you know, it's not a big deal. I'm like, okay, thank you. And I got to head out. Okay. So are we good? And she's like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. The officer did let me know while the, the dinghy's been sitting there. Hey, by the way, um, we should have investigated this part because we were so focused on making sure that the trimaran was legal that we did not think about the dinghy. Some states um, don't require you to register it through the state because of the size of it being so small. It's not really a concern. It's a to and from vessel. It's not something you go out onto the ocean with. Um, it's not something you'd even take recreationally out to do a whole lot. So, um, depending on the size of the boat and what state you're in, there are different regulations. And in Florida, it doesn't matter the size of the boat. If it has a motor on it, it has to be registered. So that was good to find out, but that's part of the reason why I'm sitting here doing this video right now, because I had to go dig out all my paperwork and make sure that I got over here right away. Um, to get the dinghy registered so that now both boats are legal and we don't have to worry about it. But what really irked me about this whole call to the police officer about the dog howling was after they were told everything was fine. After the officer had clarified that there was no issue, that this was normal, you know, that or not necessarily normal, but the, you know, that the dog was fine. It's, it, you know, we were just at work. It's nothing to be concerned about. Um, they'll be home soon. She just went to go get her spouse. And I ended up coming back without Eric cause he wasn't ready to leave work yet. He still hadn't quite made it back to headquarters. So I'm sitting on the dinghy, getting ready to go back out to the boat. And as I'm sitting there, I'm watching these two ladies that were a pair that were standing there talking to the officer and the husbands that were on their little boat blocking the pathway that goes through the mangrove and the shoreline to get back out from that direction. They're sitting sideways. So I'm just sitting there and I'm watching them and I'm listening to them going off in whatever language that they're speaking. And they keep pointing out at the boat I caught a few times a few English words that were thrown in there, which was dog. So I knew they were talking about the dog out there howling again. What really made me unhappy was that the officer already informed them that everything was fine. We'd be right back. Not a big deal. Go about your business. And then I see their teenager coming back on a skidoo from my boat, from the trimaran. Now I'm really not okay with this. And I flipped total 180, I am furious. After they had been told to just leave it alone, everything was fine, they sent their kid out there anyway with a container that I can only guess had food in it and another container that was a half milk jug cut for water and Kira has food allergies so I'm really unhappy they were already told everything was fine and still went out there to leave food and water for a stranger's dog that they'd already been told to leave alone what really makes me mad about this is if I had come home because of them visiting right up to the dog and messing with her, getting her overexcited. So now she's overexcited and she's gonna be that much more vocal because now somebody came to mess with her and she got what she wanted by crying, which was for somebody to come pay attention to her. If she had tried to jump on that skidoo and fallen in the water, something really bad could have happened and I would have been beyond furious. You do not do that. Especially after you were already told to leave matters alone. 
This was an insane attempt to just be entitled enough that you were going to do whatever you wanted anyway. And I don't care what the cultural barrier is. The officers told you not to do anything. And what makes me that much more angry is not only could there have been something that could have happened, but the fact that she has food allergies and I don't know what they fed her. I just watched her for the last two days to make sure she was going to be okay because I don't know what they gave her. That sitting right there in plain sight on the deck were two very shiny silver bowls full of food and water. Now, if it were your sailing boat, if it were your live aboard, anchored at hook, right? We are anchored out. We are off the shore. We are away from people for a reason. It's bad enough we get jackasses trying to cut across our anchor line, even though we are in the middle of a giant wide open space and you still come that close to cut over our anchor line for no other reason other than your own stupidity. To do something that they shouldn't be doing without the owner's permission after you've been told by officers to leave it alone. Because for us, it was a total invasion of privacy. It was a total invasion that they went out there and went out of their way after they'd been told to leave it alone. And they were gone the next morning. Um, they were packing their stuff up the following morning. So it's not even like they were going to hang around and talk to us directly. They never had any intention to. They just were going to be a pest to us because the dog was howling and if they had gone about their business they probably wouldn't have even noticed but it's because they went out there and goofed off on their damn ski doos and kept getting closer to the boat to investigate something that they had no business investigating it it's frustrating for us especially because we are anchored out that far so that we would not be bothering anyone because we knew the repairs that needed to be done on the trimaran were going to take us a few months and we didn't want the generator to bother them we didn't want the power tools to be bothering them um as far as anybody that lives on the shoreline there and the neighbors are all really nice we say good morning every morning that we pass through Every time we go in for groceries, every time we go in for more supplies, um, we're in and out multiple times a day, a lot of the time. And they all know us there. They're all really nice. Um, they know that Eric is former military. He's retired out of the military. Um, they know that I work local, he works local. They're very nice to us. And they actually, one of the neighbors there on the corner actually trimmed back a lot of his bushes to make sure that his surveillance camera got a good look of where the dinghy's sitting for us because he heard about the motor being stolen previously. So a lot of the frustration right now is leave us alone. Leave us alone. We're not, we're not vagrants. We're, we're not people who are trying to live here for free. We're not drug addicts or alcoholics. I mean, we don't even really drink. We don't even go out. We stick to our guns. We go to work. We make what we need to make. We do the repairs that need to be done. And we mind our own business. But more and more, we keep getting these people who are coming in now because it's snowbird season. We've had more and more issues that we're in that much more of a hurry now to try and get a motor installed in this trimaran so that we can just move. Um, not only because we can move around during storms and get into a little bit better cover, but also so that we could just go out when we are home and we can enjoy the boat a little bit better and we can start prepping to uh, be ready to head back on the Northern Pass, hopefully coming next year, because we want to be done by then. The whole point in us staying here was to be temporary, maybe a year. I'm hoping it doesn't go a year and a half before she's going to be ready to travel. To be messing with somebody's boat that you have no business messing with. Not only legally you can get into a lot of trouble for doing that, because the state of Florida is pretty strict on stuff like that. So, I mean, really, how would this impact you? How would this make you guys feel? 
Let us know in the comments.